Tuesday afternoon at 2 p.m. and this is the Boomer Tech Adventures Facebook Live session. Uh, this is Jill and uh, in southern Maine today it's a beautiful day blue skies and uh, I won't say it's warm but it's pleasant to be out with a light jacket However, I saw on the weather forecast that maybe snow Thursday night. Don't take off those studded tires yet, Jill. Okay, so today we are going to look at the Apple Photos app, the basics for iPhone and iPad. So, if you don't have your iPhone or your iPad right in your hot little hand, you probably should grab it so you can follow, follow along. Even if you're listening on watching on Facebook Live, you still can go out and uh, go to photos on your device at the same time and you won't lose the broadcast. So what have we been doing this past week? Well, last Tuesday, we looked at the Photos app editing tools, specifically autocorrect, cropping, and filters. Then on Thursday, went to part two of editing tools, and there we looked at exposure, color, and uh, lots of other things, plus markup. Then on Saturday, we looked at the Photos app basics for the Mac, and today we're going to look at the basics for the iPhone and iPad. Now, if you're interested in any of the three Facebook Lives we've already done, they are on uh, in video and they are on this page. You can just scroll down or you can go to Boomer Tech Adventures YouTube channel and you will find them there also. Okay, let's get started. Hope you have your device and you're ready to go. We're going to look at three things today. Organization and navigation of the app, how to search for images on the app, and the type of albums that exist. So when you open your Photos app, this is what you see, something similar. You may have a single picture instead of thumbnails if you were uh, looking at that single picture the last time you were on the Photos app. So let's look at organization and navigation. Now, all the images that are on your phone or your iPad are organized in chronological order. And you can look at them by year, by month and location, and by days. Oh, now where did this come from? Well, actually, I much prefer to do these kinds of sessions in person because I usually can find a way to share my world famous chocolate chip cookies. But unfortunately, you just have to use your imagination today. Oh yes, and a warning, should you come to my house, be careful where you li leave your drink. Uh, even though um, it may be very tasty, someone else may feel it is also. Okay, let's be serious. Back to navigation. So, as you're looking at your Photos app, you will notice at the top there are a series of little dialog boxes, so to speak. And in smack dab in the middle are the navigation tabs. You can see them there. The white arrows are pointing to them. Years, months, days, all photos. And you can see that I am on, in this screen, I am on all photos. It's got the darker gray and the letters are in white. And then you will notice there's some additional uh, words and symbols over to the right. And we'll look at those in just a minute. If you roll your eyes down to the bottom of your screen, you will see your menu. Now, if you have a Mac computer, you remember that your menu is over on the left. But on the iOS devices, it's at the bottom and it's most, much more simple. Photos for you, albums, and search. And we're going to look at each one of those. So let's start here. 
you see that the arrow is pointing to uh, square select plus and minus. These change the size and the shape of the thumbnails. Let me show you what I mean. So if you toggle back and forth between the plus and the minus sign, the size of the thumbnail pictures, which give you a preview of the big picture, they'll change size. So I have just on this particular one uh, tapped the plus and they got bigger. I'm just going to go back. You can see that was the size they were before. And when I tap the plus, they got bigger. Um, there's no one right way to use it. It depends on what's most comfortable for you. You just need to know that you do have some control over the size of those thumbnail photos. Now, if you look to the left of the plus and the minus, you will see there is uh, a word that will either say square or aspect. And if you toggle back and forth on this, you will see it changes the shape of the thumbnail photo. And again, this is your choice. Right now, you see their larger and their more rectangular shape as opposed to the squarish shape of what I had originally. So that is, again, another option that's strictly up to you. In between, you see the word select. You would tap on select if you wanted to choose specific photos to do something with. There's also on some screens a blue arrow in the upper left-hand corner. This also helps you navigate. It's like the back button on a computer. Give you a second there to see if you can uh, find that and use it to navigate through the app. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk specifically about navigation. As I showed you in previous pictures, you navigate by clicking on the tabs in the top center. Years, months, days, all photos. Well, let's look at what that actually looks like on your screen. So here is my screen for years. And you can see the yellow arrow is pointing to 2019. So if I just wanted to peruse what I had taken in 2019, I would tap on that square. To the right of it, 2020. And what's um, pretty interesting about 2020 is, uh, you see those multicolored bandanas? I used to use those when I was consulting with schools with uh, an active, a community building activity. They are the basis for the masks I wear when I go outside. And because I had so many, I can coordinate them to my outfit, which is very cool. So, uh, years, they're big squares, you just tap on them and you will see the uh, photos that you took in that particular year. Months, very similar. You can see there's two examples here, one in October of 2019, one in July. If you look right below the date uh, in the corner, upper left hand corner of the picture, you will see it also gives you the location. So that gorgeous tree was taken uh, on the street where I live, and so it says home, as opposed to Mr. Buffalo, that's Bob. Uh, he was in Cody, Wyoming. And you can see that it gets very specific under months also to some of the dates. So on the tree, it was specifically on October 15th, but Bob the Buffalo, sometime I took that sometime between July 4th and July 17th. However, if I want to find out exactly, I then simply tap on days. And you can see that days is highlighted at the top middle of the screen. And these are pictures that I took on October 15th. And again, you will see that uh, they are labeled home. 
Uh, there's that tree once again. That puppy in the upper right-hand corner is a mini um, Australian Shepherd. She is so cute. Uh, and then the um, stuffed scarecrows sitting around on my street. Well, you have to come to Summer Street um, in the month of October in Lisbon Falls, Maine, because one of my neighbors creates these little scenes and they change every night. It becomes a surprise the next morning. Where will the scarecrow people be? Then if you tap on all photos, you see all of your years or all of your images. Now I have to be honest with you. I do, I get frustrated with this view. I will tap on a day and it seems that sometimes I don't see all the pictures I want to see. So I often do go right to all my photos and will scroll through. You can see, you can still see the dates. So I can go through pretty quickly. But you'll have to play around with it and see which view is most useful for you. Uh, I know that Ed really likes the uh, the days and the months, and that's how he navigates. They frustrate me, so I use all photos. It's up to you. Uh, don't let somebody tell you you're doing it wrong. Uh, do what works for you. Okay. So let's now look down at the bottom of your screen at the menu. As I said, it's at the bottom of your screen and you see there are four items, photos, for you, albums, and search. And we're gonna take a quick look at each of those right now. We'll start with photos. Now we've already talked about how to navigate through them, but you need to know that you have some options. So once you select a picture and you have it up in front of you, there's Bob again. If you look over to the right, you see you have some options at the top. The starting at the left with the box with the arrow, that's your share icon. Then there's the heart, which is favorites. So if I decided I wanted this picture of Bob to be one of my favorites, I would tap on that heart and it would automatically go to my favorites album. Next is the trash can. If I decided I didn't want that picture of Bob anymore, I could tap on that and have the option to delete it. And then of course, to the far right are, uh, is the edit button. And if you're curious about editing, you need to take a look at those earlier videos either on our Facebook page where you are right now or our YouTube channel and you will find them uh, talking about specific ways and functions of the edit option. But let's take a minute and look at that share button, the box with the arrow. Oh, before we go on, down at the bottom are more thumbnails, so you can scroll through there, and if you want to change pictures, you can quickly just tap one of those, and it will pop up. Okay, the share option has lots and lots of variety. So what you do is you select, by tapping on it, the picture you want to share. And you will notice that I'm wanting to share Bob. He's there in the middle. And notice that a blue circle with a white check mark appears. So I, that is called selecting the image. And I can select more than one at a time. Then if you look down, the middle row, these are places where I have recently shared some picture, some image. And you can see that most of them have been through texting. Then the next row down begins all of my options. And you see I can airdrop this photo, I can text it, I can email it, I can send it to my notes. Uh, I might want to use it on Zoom. You can't see all the rest of them, but there's like a Facebook. There's just lots of options. 
And if I want to text that picture, I just tap on the message and ask me who I want to send it to, and it automatically embeds it. Now there are more share options. So if you go down, if you go down below that last row that starts with AirDrop, you see where it says copy photo. If you scroll down there, you're going to see all these options, which include adding to albums. Uh, this is where the print option is, way down at the bottom. Uh, lots of people in my classes will say, well, I don't know how to print one of the pictures. Well, it's not intuitive that you would necessarily go to share, but that's what you do, and you will find print. Uh, you will find the ability to use a particular picture as wallpaper behind, uh, behind your icons, etc., on your home screen. Uh, you will see that if you wanted to assign uh, a particular picture to a contact, you can do that. You can start a slideshow. You can duplicate the picture. Lots of options. So that's what that, that box with the arrow, which is constant across all Apple products. It allows you to share and send the image somewhere else other than right in front of you. Now, moving across that menu, the second thing from the left is For You. It's called For You. And what these are, they're automatically generated by the software. And they are chosen either by a specific day, a particular activity, or uh, perhaps a particular location. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as you look across at mine, you will see that I have a For Me for Wiscasset on July 7th, 2017. And that's when my family was at Monkey See, Monkey Do, which is a rope climbing course. Uh, then we have a particular day, February 5th. I must have taken several pictures that day, Fluffy Friends, and down below, you will see that uh, there's also albums that um, I have shared. So the For Me are automatically generated by the software, and they're little mini slideshows, which are fun to watch. You can share them. You can um, do some alteration of them. So, for example, here is my fluffy friends over the years, and you can't see all the pictures, uh, but there are a, um, a couple of pictures. The big dog is Pepper. She's gone over the rainbow bridge, and the white kitty is Curious, and she has also gone over the rainbow bridge. Uh, but anyway, like I said, it's just kind of a fun way that your software automatically creates these mini slideshows for you. Now, I'm going to skip albums for a minute, and I'm going to go way over to the uh, right on your menu, and we're going to look at search. This is a nice option. When you click on the search window, it will appear up at uh, the top, and you can see that I have typed in flowers. And when I hit uh, return, or what happens is that the software goes in and automatically looks, has algorithms that pick out the characteristics that are flowers. And you can see that uh, seven out of the eight are definitely flowers or plants. Uh, the one labeled cutie pies, I think it picked up on that because of the costumes the little pooches had on. This was down at Agunquit, Maine. Uh, they have a big harvest festival, and one of the events is dogs dressed up. And I think that's why they're under flowers. Now, it will search. The software will search places. It will search things. It does not search people. Uh, and I'll explain that in just a second. Okay, so here's an example of looking for something to put on a Thanksgiving card. So I search turkey and up pops. Can't you almost smell it? 
uh, a turkey that I can use on a Thanksgiving card. So let's go back to cannot tag people. Unlike the software for the Mac, the Photos app software, you cannot tag folks. You can label them by using markup, but you need to know that these labels are not searchable. Well, what do I mean by markup? Well, this particular image you have in front of you uh, is in edit mode, and you see up at the top of it, there is a gray circle with three dots. If you were to tap on the particular icon, you would get the option to markup, which is also, again, in those uh, editing videos that I've mentioned before. And in this case, I have labeled Chris Toy. You can see the yellow arrow. We were up at uh, Ed and Connie's camp, and uh, it was the Boomer Tech Adventures corporate retreat. And Choby, uh, Ed's lovely, wonderful chocolate lab, was keeping us company. And like I said, unfortunately, you cannot search for people. However, I have been reading that there are apps that you can use to tag people in iOS photos. So check the App Store, do some research. I haven't tried any of them, so I don't want to recommend them at this point. That might be something I'll do a blog post on in the future. All right, so we're going to end by looking at albums. There are three types of albums on the photo, in the Photos app for the iPhone and the iPad. Media Types, My Albums, and Shared. Media Types, again, are automatically generated. And what they do, what the software does, is it gathers, for example, all your videos into one folder. Now, this is really convenient. If you're looking for a specific video, you don't have to go through all the different images that are in your Photos app. You can just go right to Albums and scroll down to Media Types. If you haven't found Media Types yet, you need to scroll. Make sure you are on albums you see at the bottom it's in blue make sure you have tapped that albums and when it comes up you have to scroll to you get towards the bottom and you will see media types so videos i'm not going to read them all to you videos portraits those of you who have uh, iphones that have a portrait function all your portraits will be there uh, all your panoramas etc so for example when i click on my selfies folder this is what shows up and these are all the pictures where I've used the front facing lens the one that's facing towards me uh, you can see I was having a little fun in the upper right hand corner playing with photo booth uh, so I have some rather distorted views but you know I may want to scare my family so that those are kind of fun to do but anyway, so just to go back, media types, they're automatic. Uh, they're a great way to be efficient and find what you're looking for. Now, you certainly can create your own. Uh, so you can see I have created a number of folders. Also included in that is our recents, meaning basically pictures I've taken in the last year my photo stream my photo stream are those photos that no matter what device i take them on they go across uh, they will also show up in photos on my computer and show up on my photos on my iphone um, that's a whole nother um, presentation uh, it's kind of you have to set it up in settings and uh, again something else maybe we'll look at in the future Anyway, those are my particular uh, folders. So how do I create them? Okay, so I am in albums. I'm in my albums. And if you look in the upper left-hand corner of the white screen, you will see there's a plus sign. That means, lo and behold, I want to make a new album. So I tap that and 
up pops a screen. In this case, it's black because I've changed the background. Um, and I, you can see I have the option new album or new shared album. So I choose the one I want and I tap on it. Then a little, a little box pops up, a little dialog pops up, and I can enter the name for this album. And then don't forget to hit save. And now what happens next is your screen will show all of the images you have on this device. And you go through selecting which ones you want in this particular album by tapping on the empty, uh, tapping on the picture. There is an empty circle there. It's hard to see. And again, a circle will show up that is blue with a white check mark. Once you have selected your images, don't forget to tap done up in the upper right hand corner because if you don't tap done uh, your album will not fill. Now what happens if you have an existing album and you've taken some new pictures and you want to add it or you want to change them? Well there are two ways. The first thing is to open that album you want to add pictures to. So in this case you can see I have PS Express which are pictures that I have edited in a different app. And I'm going to tap Select. You see it there in the upper right-hand corner. Once I tap that, a new screen shows up, and over towards the left is the word Add. Now often when I'm trying to remember how to do this and I haven't done it for a while. I'm tapping and I don't I don't see that word add. Now it seems very obvious but sometimes I miss it. But anyway, so I tap add and then what happens? I get a screen that looks like this. It's all my photos. Add photos to PS Express and once again I'm going to tap them and a blue circle with a check mark will appear. And once again, I better not forget to uh, tap Done up in the upper right hand corner. And uh, I have added photos to uh, this, existing um, this existing album. If I want to delete a, f a photo in an album, I just have to, to tap on it in the album and hit um, hit delete and it will you'll get a dialog box it does not delete it from your photos app but it will delete it from the um, particular album okay here's the second way the second way you can add pictures to the existing album is through that share option so once again you are going to probably go to all photos or the particular year or month that you think the photo is in and you're going to open it and you are going to find the image you want and then you're going to tap the word select up there in the upper right hand corner. Now you select the pictures you want Again, the blue circle with the white check mark appears, and uh, when you're done selecting, you go to that lower left hand corner where the share icon is. If you look way down there in this picture, uh, and you tap that, and you will go to your, your add to, uh, you'll go to your share selections. In this case, I'm adding to an album, so when I tap on that, what happens? A new screen will appear with my albums, and I tap on the one I want to add pictures to. It's that simple. It's not necessarily intuitive, but after you've done it a couple of times, you'll remember. Now, what's a shared album? Well, real, what's really, clear, uh, I think, pretty cool Let's say you're at a wedding or a family reunion 
and uh, you've taken some really neat pictures you think other people would enjoy. You can create, create an album and then share it with a number of people and they do not necessarily have to have Apple products. So what do you do? So you've created your album, you tap on it, and when you tap on it, once again you'll see select. So you tap select, and after you have uh, selected your pictures with those blue circles, a new screen will appear and it will have once again that share icon. In this case, it's in the upper left-hand corner. It does pop around. It'll be in the upper left-hand corner. You tap on it, and you get your share window. And so you need to decide what method are you going to use for sharing. Are you going to send messages? Are you going to email? How are you going to do it? Facebook. So in this case, I'm using email. And you notice that the pictures are automatically embedded into the message and I just need to put in the names of the people that are going to re receive uh, my message saying I'm sharing this album with you. So again, pretty straightforward. Oh, just one last message. I can cook things besides chocolate chip cookies. Okay. So as we end, I would like to leave with a couple of critical takeaways for all of us to remember. First of all, you need to remember that menu is at the bottom of the screen. That's how you're going to get around to the different big functions. The second thing you need to remember is that the images are arranged in group in chronological order and you can access them in four different ways all photos years months and days some of the images are searchable if it's a thing an activity or places but remember you cannot unfortunately without a third person app search for people there are different types of albums uh, which you have access to and uh, you should just go ahead and play around with your Photos app so that you become very comfortable with, you, with it. Thanks for coming by today. Um, I would ask you, if you haven't already, please like us on Facebook. That way you will be always up to date as to what activities Boomer Tech Adventures may be offering. And uh, we also encourage you to subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel where there are, I don't know, many, many, many videos, short videos on different aspects of iPhones, iPads, and Macs. And it's a go-to source for how to um, use a particular function. And uh, also thanks from Ed, Chris, and me. Uh, for joining us today and uh, we hope you will come back tomorrow when indeed the real chef of Boomer Tech Adventures will be on. I'm not sure what is cooking tomorrow but I'm sure that it will be yummy and you will almost be able to smell it through your screen. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now which should end the video. It may say it's been interrupted but actually it's ending. So bye for now, enjoy the afternoon, and I uh, hope you can join us tomorrow.